In video 6, we explain the operation of the four-stroke internal combustion engine through animations. In this video we will look at how to determine the top dead center of cylinder 1 in practice. We will also learn how to find the compression stroke of cylinder 1, different techniques will be shown. We will soon turn the crankshaft pulley to find the TDC compression. To reduce the back pressure on the crankshaft pulley, it is a good idea to loosen or completely disassemble the spark plugs. To do this, use a special spark plug wrench. This has a rubber protection inside to ensure that the insulator of the spark plug is not damaged. We remove the spark plugs from cylinder 1 and cylinder 2. Also remove the spark plugs from cylinder 3 and cylinder 4. We will start by looking for the top dead center of cylinder 1. If you have an original VW crankshaft pulley, the TDC is usually indicated on the crankshaft pulley by a mark. On our AB1300 engine, the mark can be seen on the outer half of the crankshaft pulley. On another type of engine, the mark may be different, or it may not be present at all. Consult the workshop manual for your type of engine. If you line up this mark on the crankshaft pulley with the crankcase halves, then both cylinder 1 and cylinder 3 are in TDC. In fact, cylinders 1 and 3 are moving in sync as explained in video 6. Possibly the crankshaft pulley has been replaced and the new pulley has no marks, or you don't trust those marks. In this case you have to look for the TDC yourself. To find the TDC of cylinders 1 and 3, proceed as follows. Use a blunt tool, such as a screwdriver, and slide it into the spark plug hole of cylinder 1. Turn the crankshaft pulley and follow the movement of the piston of cylinder 1. The top dead center will be noticeable when the tool is pushed furthest out of the spark plug hole. Mark that point with a green paint dot on the crankshaft pulley. On the crankshaft pulley of our AB1300 engine, that corresponds exactly to the existing mark. This is the top dead center of cylinder 1, and of course, also of cylinder 3. We also mark the notch in the distributor housing with a paint dot. When the copper contact points to this mark, cylinders 1 and 3 are in TDC. But also when the rotor is turned 180 degrees. We now demonstrate this by turning the crankshaft pulley. When the green TDC mark is in line with the crankcase halves, and the rotor points to the notch in the distributor, then cylinder 1 is in top dead center in the compression stroke. When the rotor points the other way, and the green TDC mark is in line with the crankcase halves, then cylinder 3 is in the TDC compression stroke. That was easy. But if the distributor is not present, and the distributor drive shaft has also been disassembled, then finding the TDC compression stroke is a little trickier. We will outline a number of techniques for determining the compression stroke of cylinder 1. We'll start with the one used by professionals. This technique takes advantage of the fact that the valves of cylinder 3 tumble or tilt when cylinder 1 has reached the end of the compression stroke. The tumbling of the valves was discussed in video 6. To apply this first technique, you must remove the valve cover from both cylinder heads. If the engine has already been running, 
there will be engine oil in the valve cover. Use a catch basin under the cylinder head to collect the engine oil. If you don't want to damage the valve covers, use a cloth instead of a screwdriver to pull the cover off. If the valve cover is stuck, you can gently tap it with a rubber mallet. The valve cover of cylinders 3 and 4 removed. Do the same on the other side with the valve cover of cylinders 1 and 2. With both valve covers removed, you can see the valves of cylinders 1 and 2 on the right, and the valves of cylinders 3 and 4 on the left. We have marked the exhaust valves of cylinders 1 and 3 with red paint, and the intake valves with yellow paint. When you turn the crankshaft pulley, you can see the movement of the valves. The green paint mark, which we put on the crankshaft pulley earlier, indicates that cylinder 1 and 3 are in TDC. In turn, cylinder 1 and 3 will be in the compression stroke. The crankshaft pulley rotates twice per four-stroke cycle. One time the green mark will indicate that cylinder 3 is in the compression stroke, the other time cylinder 1. If the distributor is not present, then you no longer have a reference point. You must then proceed in a different manner. To determine when cylinder 1 is in the compression stroke, we will look at the valves of cylinder 3. Turn the crankshaft pulley until you see the valves of cylinder 3 tumble. Turn back a little, until the valves of cylinder 3 are just in the middle of the tumbling motion. At this point, cylinder 1 should have reached the end of its compression stroke. The green mark on the pulley should now be in line with the crankcase halves. We show this again from a little closer and slowed down. Keep a close eye on the valves of cylinder 3. The exhaust valve opens. The exhaust valve closes. The inlet valve opens. The inlet valve closes. Just in the middle of those two movements is the TDC compression stroke of cylinder 1. Also look at the green TDC mark on the crankshaft pulley. Just in the middle of the tumbling movement of the valves, the green TDC mark is also in line with the crankcase halves. The TDC compression stroke of cylinder 1 is determined. A second technique uses the TDC mark on the crankshaft pulley and the movement of the valves of cylinder 1. With this technique, you also have to follow the movement of the piston through the spark plug hole. Keep an eye on the valves of cylinder 1 while turning the crankshaft pulley in a clockwise direction. Also keep an eye on the green mark on the crankshaft pulley. It indicates when the TDC is reached. The outer valve is the exhaust valve. The exhaust valve will open at the end of the four-stroke cycle. Then the intake valve will open to draw in the fuel. The piston moves towards the crankcase and the fuel is sucked in. Then the piston moves back toward the cylinder head to compress the mixture. The piston reaches TDC and the end of the compression stroke. The green mark on the pulley should now be in line with the crankcase halves. There you go, the TDC compression stroke of cylinder 1 is determined. If you don't want to disassemble the valve covers, you can also use this third technique. This technique works well when the engine is disassembled. With the engine built in, the spark plug hole is not easily accessible. In this technique, we will try to hermetically seal the spark plug hole of cylinder 1. This can be done with your thumb. The edge of the spark plug hole can be sharp. I use a plastic cap as a tool to seal the hole.
turn the crankshaft pulley in a clockwise direction. When cylinder 1 has reached the end of the compression stroke, you will feel a pressure and a recognizable sound. The compressed air is looking for a way through the spark plug hole. The green mark on the pulley will line up with the two crankcase halves at the end of compression. The fourth technique is a little more spectacular. You also need special tools for it. We use the hose that comes with it, with our compression gauge. You will need a compression gauge during the engine overhaul. Screw the hose into the spark plug hole. Attach a silicone glove to it, or a balloon. Make sure no air can escape through the rubber band, or through the spark plug hole. Turn the crankshaft pulley in a clockwise direction. The compression stroke is now very visually represented. When the glove is filled with air, then cylinder 1 has reached the end of the compression stroke. The green mark on the pulley should now be in line with the crankcase halves. The TDC compression stroke of cylinder 1 has been determined. We will determine the ignition timing of cylinder 1 in the next video. This additional mark on the crankshaft pulley will be needed to mount the distributor drive shaft and to adjust the ignition. More information about all the parts and tools used in this video series can be found as comments below each video on our YouTube channel. See you soon.